I don't know if the people out in the hall can hear us. It's a little hard. Hello, people in the hall? Hello. Yeah, they're all stuck on the, uh, the uh, gallery, which makes sense. So, I have with me Trevor Dickinson. Trevor is a uh, great guy. He has been a force in the uh, keeping Indigo alive with Aeon. So, we should give him a, a very large round of applause for that. Thank you. So, I first met Trevor 2009 or 10. And he, he shows up to Annie West and he's like, the, the, the banquet, the, the keynote speaker. We're all like, who is this guy? <laughs> and he has a presentation where he's talking about his his past and like these major moments in his life. And like, here's the birth of my first daughter and the 2000 that I got. Am, am I right? <laughs> and, and he's sort of like, he did this crazy presentation and we're like, wow, this guy really is into this stuff. It's cool. And then, like, a year later, we start hearing about Aeon and partnerships with uh, Amiga Kit and working with Hyperion. And then a few months after that, this, this mystery box started surfacing and talking about the, uh, the X1000. And then a few months after that, the first prototype boards show up. So Trevor is someone that we all owe a great uh, debt to again, for uh, keeping me alive. But before Trevor speaks, very briefly, um, how many here have banquet tickets? Oh, good, good, good. That is excellent to see. I apologize in advance. I kind of screwed up. The, we'll get everyone to see. Kind of messed up the seat arrangements. My, my volunteers, Paul, my brother, have been trying to fix it all day. But we'll, get it, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. Everyone will get it there. We're going to get... It, the, the original schedule was to start the reception at 5.30. We're going to do that. We are then going to sit at 7 for the, for, the, uh, for the presentation. And then we're going to have Zach give us a short presentation um, at... Because what the Kickstarter set officially was a cliff of Viva Amiga. And, you know, Kickstarter is important, so I've been holding him to that. And, and just now, Zach's like, well, can we show the whole thing? Can we run the whole Viva Amiga video at the banquet. And I'm like, yeah, why not? So starting at 6, we're actually going to have the world premiere of the Viva, Viva Amiga documentary at the banquet. So we're going to start with that, and then we're going to do the uh, program that we, we uh, set up after. So I'm very excited to, to see that. Jack has put a ton of work in it. Um, so it's a great treat. We were going to show it tomorrow, so we're going to still show it tomorrow. <laughs> so we're going to have it tonight and tomorrow, which means I can sleep a little longer because I've seen it. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Trevor and uh, look forward to seeing everyone at the banquet. Thank you. multitasking operating system 
and of course the beautifully simple Amiga GUI, uh, GUI which we all come to know and love. We won't talk about all the things that happened during the after commons of death and how we got here today, but just to remind you, so there's some of the names and companies that were involved in this the story we call Amiga and continuing continued journey with By the way, I'm wearing the shoes in honor of Joe Torres and his wife. I'm trying to act in. I've even got the socks. The belt, the tuffy, but I promised I wouldn't show my other pants. <laughs> oh, sorry, undershorts were in America. Uh, Aeon, why, what, 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 who is Aeon, right? Aeon Technologies, myself, my British father, Matthew Lehman. Um, we're committed Commodore enthusiasts and vegans. I got my first Commodore pet in 1981. I think it might be in the movie, I don't know. Um, and Matthew got his first Amiga, was Amiga 1200. He's a bit younger than me. Okay. Um, we make next generation Amiga hardware. So to run Amiga OS, Amiga OS 4. And we want to promote all Amiga flavors. So in other words, more for OS, more for OS, or OS. We have a preference for Amiga OS, but you know, we'd like to support all, all Amiga flavors. We need to come together to support our, our small but hopefully growing community. In the future, we're working on new models. You'll see on the desk out there, we've got the uh, Amiga 1X 1000, and the new Amiga 1X 5000 has been released in September this year, you know, onto the current time scale. Uh, we've got, I said two at the last show, projects ongoing, we have to have three. Uh, no more details about that, sorry. <laughs> right, so what's it like to develop the next generation Amiga? That gorgeous young man there to me, what went wrong? <laughs> that was the launch of the um, X1000 at the Computer History Museum in uh, Bletchley Park in the UK. And we have some people there that day. Uh, the story I always tell is that 12 hours before that show, actually when I turned up that show, I wasn't expecting anything to work. Because up to that day, we never got OS4, or the developers never got OS4 to boot on the X1000. So I was expecting to turn up to the show. We'd got the developers in from, from Europe, from Germany, who were coming on the Eurostar, the tunnel, the channel tunnel, and they were hand carrying the boards. I got the, the casings and everything else, and then we installed their boards in the casings and then demonstrated the show. But as, as far as I knew, nothing worked. So I turned up to the show, they were late. I was sitting there five minutes, ten minutes before the show was due to start again. What have I done? What have I done? And they came, they installed the boards, and it worked. All right, it just worked. It was hung together with chewing gum and string, and it showed me actually had a piece of hardware uh, that worked. You go to the X1000 today in the back there, it is rock solid, it's a nice machine. And, and uh, we know the X5000 will be the same. But why are we developing for the Amiga? The Amiga market is tiny compared to its data. We don't even appear any of these statistics. Uh, we're certainly not on the, on the mobile market with smartphones. And the Amiga OS doesn't even appear on the operating systems. So why would anyone be stupid enough to try and make new Amiga hardware? What about making new Amiga hardware? NRE costs, non-recurring engineering costs, are horrendous for small volume manufacturing. If it costs you $200,000 to take a, make a brand new board, design it, develop it, and get it to a prototype stage, you do it well. And that's called non-returning, non-recurring engineering cost. If you build two million systems, well, I think that cost can be absorbed quite nicely. If you build 200, well, you do the math. It gets very expensive. And that's the money you must re re get back before you even look about make a problem. All these companies you know they can some returns. So I call it the money black hole. I quite like that picture. Time scales. Oh don't tell me about time scales. Hardware engineers are great guys, but they always want to make it better. And I've always said perfect is the enemy of good. Let's make it good, we'll make it better later. So time scales are always underestimated and over optimistic. And software is even worse. 
software time spells are really long and they're always, always underestimated. I don't know if it shows there, that's supposed to be a gold motherboard. The prototypes are made in very small batches and they're extremely expensive. You can pay as much as five thousand dollars a board. And you, you make prototypes because you don't want to uh, create hardware bugs which you recreate in, in, the, in the production model. So you do one prototype, so run a three or four boards. You do a second prototype run three or four boards. And if you're lucky, you only do a third one. The X1000 we did three, and uh, obviously all that's the, the, the cost. If you're selling in high volume, you can absorb the cost of these from the NRE and you, know, you can get a better price. If you think about Ferrari, it's Ferrari, Ferrari Tesserosa, it's made in very small volumes at very, very high cost. It's almost custom made. You talk about Ford Pinto, they make it much higher volumes. The torque's not a very good car, but it's a US car and everyone knows it. Not because it's a US car, but it's a low, uh, low, low value item. And then it goes to a skateboard, which is not made in billions on millions, and it's very low cost in comparison. So uh, if I say where the X1000 and X5000 sit, it's popping around. Somewhere here, really high cost of numbers we're making. So what lessons did I learn uh, in my uh, the X1000 development? The mini market is tiny compared to its glory days. The NRE costs are significant. Time scales are optimistic the hardware guy tells you one month, double. The software guy tells you two months, or one month, travel. Then my rough rules are done. And software development takes much longer, underestimate, underestimate, and undervalued. So software guys need to be rewarded. The results is a high sales price, low because of the volume sales. Uh, so uh, I've heard people complain about the cost of the Amiga or X1000. The cost is what it is because the cost of making is very high. And one more thing. No. It turns your hair grey. <laughs> 2010, 2015. So what I do is, <laughs> well, the Amiga or X1000 for me was a, a, a dream. Um, when I was a, I was a Commodore, 64, PET, 64, 128, 128D, that blew up in a Texas thunderstorm. With insurance money, I got an Amiga 2000, so act of God, obviously. Um, 3000, 4000, I used 3000 to 4000 in my business for desktop publishing, graphics, uh, video work, technical matters. And uh, I wanted an X, my kids used to joke with me, because what do you want that for Christmas? I want an X5, I want an Amiga 5000. What's it going to do? It's going to fly. It's going to do everything. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never got one Commodore went bust. So I decided that when I started to think about, you know, when you get to middle age, I'm only just a little bit. When you get to middle age, I think, what can I do about it? I've worked hard. I've had a good time, but I want to do something special. For me, that's something special worth thinking. Let, let's produce a new and big computer, a new next generation new computer. So the X1000 was launched at Leslie uh, Park, Vintage Computer Festival, 2010. Beta test boards were released in the summer of 2011, those are the dates. 2010, June, Beta test board, final Beta test board, 2011, there's a year. <coughs> first contact systems, or first contact, were released at the end of 2011, and in reality, I think we'll actually see them at the beginning of 2012. That's sort of obviously the Amiga 1X1000, uh, running Amiga OS 4.1, uh, running a uh, uh, native Amiga browser, Odyssey, and that's what you play on YouTube. One of the things we did is we, we because the, uh, li the Linux development community is far greater, and they test out all the chips that we use in our board, we use Linux as a testing ground to test all the hardware to make sure that no surprises or hardware bugs. And I'm pleased to say that we've got uh, support for over 12 PC Linux distributions. We have a core Linux uh, 
team of volunteers, four or six guys, three or four who are really, really active, they're like machines. Every day it's something new coming out, every day. Yeah. And, they, and they, they, they link up to the Lions community and make sure our, our, that we support the latest Lions, but the, the most up to date Lions. Um, you think after making zero money with the X1000, actually made it quite a big loss personally. That would be it for me. I, I achieved my dream. I got my X5, my Amiga 5000, which was the Amiga 1 X1000. But stupidly enough, I decided to try and uh, produce another one. And so in 2012, we produced a uh, Cyrus motherboard and power PC as a, a tester. A year later, <laughs> um, we signed a contract with uh, our hardware developers. Uh, probably one of the biggest investments in the next generation of the uh, uh, market. $1.2 million, three contracts to go and do a really big development program to, to produce this, uh, ne the next next generation big. Let me skip that. Uh, I'm trying to save some time for Bill. Uh, okay. Was the uh, the Cyrus Plus board was released in it was actually shipped to beta testers in 2014. So now we have about 50 beta testers, a bit less than that, 45, uh, with Amiga One, oh, sorry, Cyrus motherboard. The designation for the the like this, like it. the designation for the Cyrus is Amiga One X5000. So I have got my 5000 at the end. <laughs> And there'll be two models, uh, 5000 Pro 20, according to the Commodore tradition, and 5000 Pro 40. And they're based on uh, uh, Freescale, D5020, D5040 CPUs. Running Amiga OS, designed to run Amiga OS 4, 4.1. They'll only obviously run support power PC lines. Uh, there's the one of the screenshots of uh, OS 4 running on Amiga uh, 1 X5000. You'll see three or four Amiga X1, X5, Amiga 1, X5 classes in the building today. One on our desk, one on my parents' desk, the one that developed the OS4, and, um, and one on the history table. And this one. But of course, we also have a line of distribution, also, which is supported. And we also have a um, uh, more fast development team, uh, a more Morph OS for the X5 class. Cyrus Motherboard was fixed. Uh, 5040, I mentioned the 5040 processor. Uh, we already have the prototypes for that. Uh, and they were delivered earlier this year. Uh, I, I don't expect those to be uh, released mostly until early next year. I'm pleased to say that the first run we received in June, and now we're getting 25 volts a week, not being in terms of you know, mainstream computing. 25 boards a week to us is significant. And we have 500 boards in the first batch. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So, also, what we've been doing, while we think now we've got a handle on hardware, we've got new uh, high power hardware coming through, we've got new low power hardware coming through, low cost hardware coming through. The big thing is software, software content. So, we're working hard to increase our software content. We've been acquiring iconic Amiga titles for the past. We've been developing new Amiga titles, new utilities. And we'll continue to do that. We have an app store, which, we, which is a Amiga app store, specifically called Amiga OS, which runs on our, our hardware. And you can download software, and it, it supports developers and their products as well. So that's coming on very nicely, and we're very pleased with that. Uh, app store's called Amy Store, well, that's a surprise. Um, <laughs> where are we going from here? Uh, I'll ignore the first one. Uh, I said we've got two, actually we've got three hardware contracts, contacts, contracts in place. We've got more software in development, in, in development productivity, games, utilities. And we're going to put a lot more effort on the software side, but we think content is where people get there. Brings me to the end, I wanted to make it quick, I wanted to make it sharp, because Bill said out by 4.30, and I think I'm going to make that some questions. <laughs> so, we're really here because of the Amiga, and it's the first anniversary. I feel so humble to be here with the guys that created it, that were involved in it, and it's important to, to 
life. And I'm pleased that I can, in my small way, help to carry on that tradition. So, happy 30th birthday, Megan. Here's to another 30 years. Thank you. I've got a few minutes for questions if you've got any questions. When's the laptop? Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for being patient.